Hey there, world historians. Mr. Leary here again, and we're doing another topic talk. We've started a new unit uh, called Ancient Globalization, and uh, really we're still talking about empires of the ancient world, but now through the lens of how did they influence other people, whether purposely or indirectly, how did they carry ideas, and what was the impact of those new ideas on uh, peoples of that age, but, but particularly people moving forward. Uh, we're looking at the Mediterranean Sea and some groups that were very influential coming out of that region, and we're going to start with the Minoans. Uh, from 2000, it says to 1400 BC, they centered their culture on the island of Crete, found in the eastern Mediterranean. And they were great traders uh, of goods, and there's some information there as to what the goods might have been. Um, they're a highly, highly structured civilization here in culture. Um, they would have been uh, able to go throughout the region via water and, of course, carry their influence. They were very influential to the Greeks. In fact, if you look back at Greek mythology, there'll be references to uh, some of the Minoans, uh, the legendary stories coming out of that culture and civilization. I'm not really sure why their civilization ended, um, be it natural circumstances or invasions, but uh, we'll move forward now to the Phoenicians. It says around 1100 BC, found on the east coast of uh, today, the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, they will build Mediterranean city-states that will be um, trade centers and uh, also centers of culture and they will sail of course living on the water they will be shipbuilders as well able to spread their trade routes across that body of water uh, as they sailed they also colonized in fact we've even talked about one of their former colonies before when we studied the Romans we mentioned their rival the Carthaginians and they that would be an extension of the Phoenician influence Probably the one thing worth mentioning about the Phoenicians and their influence forward would be their alphabet. Uh, we've studied many groups in saying that they created a written language to keep record of their trade and their, their economy. Uh, the Phoenicians were no different. However, this time their alphabet would be phonetic. It would be sounds instead of images or phrases and words. And with that, you can build letters or build the letters together to build words. Um, much like we do with our own alphabet today. Uh, in fact, if you went back in time, um, the, the alphabet that we have today in our language has a relationship with that Phoenician alphabet. Moving forward one more time in history to Alexander the Great. And uh, we know that he came into power in the 300s BC, the early 300s BC. Um, and uh, he was a Macedonian, uh, that region just north of what we have already studied as the Greeks, those Greek city-states. His father had a massive army, was, was a conqueror, and upon his death, his assassinated death, Alexander took over for him. Uh, he, he was highly skilled. He was uh, a great warrior, a great uh, um, strate um, str strategist, get it out there in a minute. Um, great, great at leading troops in the battle, but he was also an intellectual. He had been tutored by Aristotle, in fact. It became his quest to conquer the Persians, those Persians who had, of course, challenged Greek authority on the Anatolian Peninsula. As he challenged those Persians, it became his mission, if you will, to conquer the Persian emperor Darius, and, uh, and he was successful in doing that. In fact, in 11 years, his empire stretched, your notes say, for over 11,000 miles. And he was knocking on the door of India there at the Indus Valley when finally he, he pulled back for some reorganization. Um, unfortunately, upon that, he uh, quickly became sick and died. There's some dispute as to what exactly caused his death, but nonetheless he died. And thus we, we talk now about what was his influence. And we're going to use the word Hellenistic as... Uh, as his greatest influence. Uh, this Hellenistic culture that developed under his brief reign uh, was really a mixing of several different cultures from the Greeks to the Persians to the um, to even Indian culture there uh, not only in language and food but in dress and particularly in learning. Um, the impacts of this uh, Hellenistic culture is found in the many cities that were built and became centers of education, centers of culture, 
Again, on your notes, if you will, you can see a list of all the different uh, advances that were made. Again, not directly because of Alexander the Great, but his conquering and putting together these, these ideas helped make it happen. So, as we look at our own culture today, uh, what you would consider to be developed uh, Western culture, you have to give a nod to the Greeks. You have to also talk about you know, how Alexander the Great, and even, uh, even the Romans all played a part or a role in that. It says in your notes, by 150 BC, the Hellenistic world had been in decline and Rome was growing into power. But this had been a build up to this moment. Um, and then finally, the legacy of Rome can be seen in this Western culture today uh, in language. Uh, the, the Latin language of the Romans definitely an influence on words in our English language. Uh, the idea of having practical infrastructures to provide resources to the people like water with the aqueducts and roads for travel and trade. And then even legal systems that make sense that can be consistently applied through codes. So there we are, our first installment of Ancient Globalization. Thanks. <laughs>